Hello my sketchy friends and welcome back to my next video. Um, it's a super nice sunny day here in South Africa so I thought we'd show you the little garden and a nice blue sky and I'm gonna go sit indoors and sketch and make this video for you but you know just wanted to let you know what I was missing out on. <laughs> For a couple of hours while I do this uh, this experiment. So the story behind why I'm doing this video is um, that it kind of weirdly only sprang into my awareness very recently that some urban sketches don't really use any ink lines at all. I know that sounds weird um, because loads of urban sketches don't use ink lines but um, I guess what I mean is that some urban sketches use the pencil like a pen, so they don't just sketch lightly to do the watercolour over the top um, to hide the lines, they actually use the pencil quite visibly, so you, you see the lines like you would ink lines. Um, and I just kind of never really paid much attention to this before, um, and this kind of just came into my attention um, very recently when I was watching a YouTube video by an urban sketcher called Paul Wang, um, so Paul actually is uh, an instructor for urban sketches and he's like quite a well-known urban sketcher. I think he's based in Singapore, um, I think. Um, but yeah, he's got some incredible stuff so you can check him out on Instagram and whatnot. And also he's got a channel on YouTube if you want to watch him in action. He's got a few videos there. Um, but I noticed that he sketches in really heavy pencil lines and then goes straight into watercolour. Um, so, you know, there's no ink involved, but he's also not trying to hide the pencil lines to make it just look like watercolour. So, I thought this is actually quite a convenient way to sketch, because then you, can't, you don't really have to carry pens with you or anything, you just need a pencil, basically. Um, and I think I always thought, like, if you used heavy pencil lines, I never really thought about using them so that they actually show through to define the lines of shapes. Like, I always thought of them as, like, yeah, trying to hide them kind of thing. But then I also thought about it and I was like, well, wouldn't the watercolour kind of get a bit muddy beneath? Um, wouldn't the pencil get a bit muddy beneath the watercolour? Um, so, you know, maybe it will, but I don't know. I thought I'd try it out because I've never even really thought about this approach before and I thought it could be quite interesting. So, and then I thought it could be even more interesting if I try and do the same sketch with the pencil lines with the watercolour over the top and then try and do the same one um, as close as I can get it but sketch it with ink lines instead and sort of see what the difference is. So I thought this could be uh, a good sort of another sort of showdown slash comparison video really. So you guys will have to let me know in the comments below um, by the end of the video like which one you prefer whether it's number one which is just the pencil heavy pencil lines and watercolour or if you prefer number two with um, uh, the ink lines and watercolour. So um, yeah, let's kind of, let's see what happens really. Um, so I've decided to sketch uh, this door, um, which is um, a photo that is on my sketching reference board on Pinterest. So I think I mentioned this board in the last video or maybe the one before, um, either way, um, there are loads of pictures there and I'm, I'm adding to them like on a daily basis or whenever I get stuck in a Pinterest hole, and um, which is quite frequently. Um, so I'm adding to this board all the time, but I'm just collecting their like interesting photos I find on Pinterest of like um, cool buildings to draw or like this, like cool interesting doors. Um, yeah, so if you also want to sketch this door or if you also want a bit of inspiration or um, looking for something to sketch then go check out that board. Um, perfectly welcome to use anything on there. Obviously I think only one photo on there is mine, all the rest are just stuff I found around Pinterest. So um, but yeah go check it out. Um, the link is in the description below. Um, so here I am just using a normal HB pencil, so that's just the standard middle of the road pencil. Um, I actually got given this pack of six pencils from, uh, from a friend for free the other day, um, which is cool because it's got like some really crazy ones in there. It's got like 
8B. It's got like it starts from HB as the lightest, and then it's like 2B, 4B, 6B, maybe 7B and 8B, which is crazy. I've never never used that before. So um, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with those. Actually, doing some landscapes. I was taking a a craftsy course. I know I bang on about craftsy all the time, but um, I was taking a craftsy course um, called Landscapes in Pencil or Graphite or something like that. And it was quite cool. Um, so here I'm just checking my handy watercolour chart to try and sort of figure out what colour or what colour mix um, will get close to that door. Um, and if you guys haven't seen it yet, I do have a video on how I made it. Um, bear with me, bear with that video because it's not the best in terms of production because um, as one angry YouTuber pointed out, the, the music is far too loud um, for my voice so I do apologise, that was early in my YouTubing journey. Um, and I'll never make that mistake again. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's quite a useful um, way to, you can just flick through it quickly and you can kind of get the idea of how to make that chart. Um, it does take a while, especially if you've got 14 different colors um, in your pan, as I also found out, it took, me, it took me hours, like hours, I couldn't believe it. Um, but so worth it, I use it all the time um, to know which colors to mix, um, to kind of get close to, um, any shades I need for, you know, when I'm uh, sketching from a photo. So it's not something I'd, I carry around with me, obviously, but um, if you've got a smaller selection of colours and you can fit that kind of chart in your sketchbook, I'd highly recommend that because then obviously you can carry it around with you, so it'd be super useful um, when you are out roaming around urban sketching. Um, but yeah, I find it super useful to refer to um, at home when I'm doing this sort of stuff or when I'm messing around in my sketchbook. I'm trying various bits and bobs out, so um, yeah, so do go and check that video out. Um, so here I'm just, um, I'm doing a bit of, a lot of wet and wet te technique on this sketch um, because uh, I forget who it was, but someone commented the other day that I should do more wet and wet um, and that it would kind of go with my style and it's not something I consciously avoid, but it's also, I don't know, I just go, I don't really think things through too much, which you guys may have gathered already by watching other videos, but um, yeah, a, a nice wet and wet technique sort of lended itself quite well to making this um, weathered kind of looking wall, you know, um, getting kind of those textures in there. That was and that was really fun. Actually, it was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so so far, I mean, the pencil isn't like smudging or anything or making anything look muddy like I kind of thought it might do. I don't know. Don't really know why I got that impression, but I thought with the added of adage of water on top, it might just sort of, I don't know, like spread the graphite around and make it all a bit muddy. But it doesn't, so that's good. And it's just a normal HP pencil, nothing different about it. Um, so here I'm actually using a rigger brush. So it's a brush like with really long, thin um, bristles on it. Um, and as the name suggests, I think it was used most commonly to paint the rigging, like the rope lines on ships. Um, so it's really good to create sort of fine lines. I don't use it an awful lot, but that's only because I probably forget I've got it. But I thought, oh, that might be a really um, a good way to kind of emphasise certain areas of the sketch. Because obviously I'm not using ink or, or, and not using a thick ink pen. Um, you know, there were certain bits that I wanted to like get a finer line on that I, then I could achieve with my dagger brush but um, using the pencil and going over and thickening lines wasn't really didn't really do the job that wasn't really working in the same way as you could do with a pen so um, yeah so I turned to this rigor brush and I kind of like using like a dark like an indigo or something like that just to kind of bring some of the shadow the shadows out so I definitely felt like I had to work a little bit harder with my watercolors to um, try and uh, get the depth that maybe I might be lazy and just do with a pen usually. So it definitely forced me to kind of think a little bit harder um, about what I was doing. So, which I think is good, you know, you, you, otherwise you get into a bit of a comfort zone doing relying on the same things or doing the same things. And as we know, I do like experimenting and trying to figure out new stuff and ways to make things easier or more interesting ways to do things so yeah this definitely was a challenge but I was really happy with how this came out actually um, I thought it might be sort of lacking a bit of em um, emphasis but 
I don't know, I quite like the subtleties of of it, of wood, like not using ink lines. It does actually let more of the watercolour do the talking, I think. So yeah, I was I was pleased with with this. Um so here I'm just I'm doing my best to go over this dark bit with the white gel pen, but it's not showing up the best. I don't really have the best uh the best luck with gel pens. I don't know what it is. I feel like I watch other people use gel pens and it, the line comes out so nice and smooth and bright and it's like doesn't happen for me. But in the second sketch you'll see when I paint when I use it on a like a jet black kind of kind of background it stands out a lot more. So maybe that was it. Maybe that that kind of indico watercolor shade doesn't help the white show up too much. Um so yeah, I'm just sort of going around to adding the finishing touches with the pencil really, but it kind of just makes it all a bit graphite -y and shiny and stuff. So uh, I was using using it sparingly. So there we go. That's the first sketch done. And as I said, I was quite um, I was quite happy with it actually. I quite like that that electrical cable coming out of the decayed kind of top bit there. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, the door's okay, I think. Um, but I really like the walls. I really like um, how I how I captured that. I was, that was that was my favourite part of this sketch. So now we are moving on to sketch two. Um, so where I can use inclines. So this is my comfort zone. So I am using a pencil as I normally would to um, just get the basic shapes in. Um, and you'll see I'm sort of measuring against the sketch on the first page purely so that I can kind of get them the same sort of size just to make it visually look like nice. Just try, try and get them as similar as possible in terms of shape and size. I didn't quite get it, but you know, I got it as close as I could without getting too anal about it all. So, um, so yeah, as I said, I'm, so I'm just using the same pencil, just the HB, just to get the um, basic shapes in um, before I move on and do all the detailing with the pen. So I'm drawing much lighter in pencil this time around because I know obviously I'm going to go over it in pen, but I also don't want it to sort of show, show through where it's not supposed to kind of thing. Um, so if there's any bits left over where when I've finished drawing with the pen, if there's any sort of pencil that's a bit too visible, I'll go back and sort of get rid of it a bit with the with my kneadable eraser. But otherwise, I don't really I don't really bother erasing the whole thing. It's just if I can see pencil poking through somewhere. Um, that's all. So now I'm going in with my Twasabi um, Eco fountain pen. Um, so inside of this pen is platinum carbon ink which is my favorite ink admittedly it's the only ink that I've used inside my fountain pens but I think I just made the right choice straight off the bat from what I can tell from reading and looking at other sort of information I think platinum carbon ink is kind of the kind of the go-to for a lot of people um, so you can buy this off, off Amazon uh, the links in the description below um, but you can buy it in other shops as well I've seen it seen it elsewhere I think I bought this pot from a from where I bought my fountain pens here in South Africa, which is a company called rightgear.co.za. Um, so they had it as well. But it's it's nice because it's a permanent ink and it's a waterproof ink that is safe to use inside a fountain pen. Um, I have asked at art shops before if they've got any such ink and they'll tell you, well, some of them might tell you that no, it's not possible to fill an, a fountain pen with permanent waterproof ink. And that's incorrect because it, it definitely is. Um, so yeah, platinum carbon ink, it's super black um, and it dries reasonably quickly as well so it's um, not too easy to smudge unless you really kind of wipe your arm over your sketch. And in fact, I do smudge uh, <laughs> I do smudge a bit in a minute but um, oh well, you know. Um, I'm showing you what can happen, you see. I think it's because I went to erase some pencil lines and I... Um, yeah, I, I forgot the ink was still a tiny bit wet, so I did smudge it, but it's fine. Now I go over it in watercolour, you don't even notice, it's all good. And here I, I went a bit wrong because I drew the panels in those two kind of um, inside sections where the that pattern is, and I was like, oh god, this is all going wrong. Um, but I drew 
the pattern over the top and it was actually fine. It just looks like there's panels beneath it, which is fine. So it's here I managed to smudge the door handle, um, but never mind. Um, so here I'm just using a Copic brush marker. I'm just using the Copic because it was the only thing in the shop that was what I needed because um, my other one had run out. Um, and I quite like it actually. It's got a really soft nylon brush tip. Um, but yeah, it's it almost feels like using a paintbrush. It's kind of odd. But again, it's uh, waterproof as well. So you can um, paint over it and whatnot without any problems. So that's fine. Um, and here, by the way, I'm just using my same the same brush I, I tend to use, um, which is the Escoda Reserva uh, watercolor brushes. They are travel brushes as well, so they kind of um, pull apart in the middle, and you can insert the brush end into the handle. So they're great for traveling because you don't ruin the the tip of your brush. Um, and the same deal with this this small one. It's the Rosemary Dagger brush. It's also a travel brush, so I find those super handy. Um, so I'm trying my best to kind of keep the uh, the painting the same, just to kind of make it reasonably fair. Um, but I guess this uh, these kinds of experiments are always a bit faulted because once I've done the first one, I'm a, I'm a bit warmed up. So uh, and I know know what I'm doing a bit more. You'd think anyway. Um, so uh, there are bits on this second one that I did differently that I didn't perhaps like in the first one. But mind you, there's bits that I did. A bit bolder that I preferred in the first one, so I guess it's you know swings and roundabouts. Um, so I'm just going in with the dagger brush and just kind of getting those darker shadow bits. So the bit that I I got wrong in the first sketch, um, which I which is in the photograph, is that the the inside wall there is not in shadow; it's actually light and the the wall facing you where I'm painting right now is darker um, so I decided that I would correct myself on this sketch which does make it look a bit different but that, that's fine I mean generally we're just focusing on the effect of using pencil lines instead of ink lines so I mean um, yeah so yeah you can see what I mean a bit better there like the uh, the left that Bit of the wall is a bit darker and the inside bit is lighter which is what it should have been really but that's fine so now I'm just trying to get those door panels I wasn't overly happy with how I got them in the first sketch um, so I'm just trying to see if I can do it a bit better on here um, I quite liked the indigo sort of shadows that I used on the first sketch so I did that again and makes that sort of top part pop out a bit. I don't really, I don't know what those arches on the top of doors are called. Um, I don't know the technical term, but um, I was quite happy with that section of the sketch on both both uh, both attempts. I thought it kind of came out quite nicely. So sometimes I jump back and just add a few little bits to the first sketch, just where like the wall meet, meets the ground and stuff like that, just darkening it up a bit because. I feel like it should have been that way and also just to try and keep them a bit try and keep them even in terms of the painting you know because that's not what we're judging here so I'm just trying to give that door a bit of texture really um, a bit more interest trying to get those panels to pop a bit more I think I'd like to. I'd like to have a go at doing this again, like on bigger paper, so that those panels and everything's a bit larger, so I can get a bit more detail into them. That would be that would be pretty cool. I might try that actually, because I also think this just makes a really nice like uh, painting to hang on the wall. I think it's got such beautiful colours in it, you know. Um, but of course, this is a door in Mexico, um, which I you know I'm a big fan of doors in Mexico. Um, I spent a lot of time in Mexico and I spent a lot of time drawing doors in Mexico but this is from a town called Merida and I haven't actually been to Merida so um, I would like to go there one day. Um, so now I'm using the gel pen on the the pretty black background and it is sort of standing standing out a bit better. I've got no guidelines here though like I had with the pencil sketch so I'm just trying my best to uh, reference the photo and my sketch on the left um, but I'm really happy how that came out actually so um, 
I think if I was going to do this sketch, um, again, there's there's elements I definitely take from both, from the two sketches and kind of meld them together. And I think that was like kind of my finding really is um, I really like both of them. Um, and there's just certain aspects of about each one that I would um, like to emulate. So, for example, on the pencil sketch one, I really like... Um, not having the pencil lines on that top arch bit um, because I just think it makes it a bit more delicate um, and a bit more less outlined, you know, everything outlined in black kind of thing, which is obviously not very realistic. Not that I'm going for realism, but I do quite like that top arch part on the first one. Um, and then I think the second one uh, where the black at the top of the door and the white gel pen on top, that's my favorite part. Um, I think I prefer the wall in number one, um, but then painted in the correct way like number two, so where the dark part of the wall should be on the outside and not on the inside. Um, but yeah, I do, I think I would, you know, be pretty confident now to go out and sketch with just a pencil and do the heavy pencil lines and paint over it. It's like, um, quite a... Uh, a convenient way to, you know, not having to worry about pens. That's pretty awesome. I, I like I like that idea. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how both of these came out. I'm quite happy with how consistent I managed to keep them, apart from you know little bits. Um, and I think I definitely think I'm going to try and merge these two techniques going forward and using pen only in certain areas and and using um, pencil in certain areas. So I don't know. Quite excited about how that's going to influence my sketching uh, in the future. So um, just a quick uh, one guys, I do have an ebook available to purchase. Um, it contains um, all of my watercolour and ink illustrations over the last three years of my travels which have been quite interesting. Um, they start from 2017 when I quit my job and I started travelling around Mexico and Central America um, through to uh, travelling in Iran in 2018. Um, and then visiting South Africa and Ethiopia and Somalia um, and those kind of places. Um, a big trip to Australia that I did. So all kinds of things really, all kinds of uh, weird and wonderful places and um, my sketches from along the way. Um, and it takes you right up to um, lockdown in South Africa in August 2020. So um, do go check it out. Um, the link is below, and if you use the discount code USKWORLD, you get a whole 20% off, which is a bargain, absolute bargain. And then also, while you're at it, guys, um, do drop by um, urbansketchingworld.com. That's my blog, my website. Um, I've got loads of, like, over 60 articles and posts there on all kinds of things, everything to do with urban sketching, from beginner's guides right through to, like, more experimental um and inspir inspirational um, articles. So please, please, please do go check that out. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please do let me know in the comments below which one you prefer, um, or if you've tried um, the using the pencil line sort of technique, if that's something you do, um, let me know. Um, and thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video.